Hello guys and welcome back to Game Development Tutorials. So, we are working on a space shooter game. So last time what we did, or two times ago, and then last time is a two part. Uh, everything's still the same here, but when we just press escape, a pause menu will appear and it will freeze everything in the background. And then these buttons work, continue, it will continue the game. Restart, it will restart the game, and quit will quit you out of the game. So today, we shall start adding sound effects to this game. This is this is a bit complicated, that's why this might be two or three parts, uh, but it will definitely not be one part. Okay, so, first of all, let us make a new script, so let's just select the script folder. Right click, create, and see some script. I'll just, I'll just call this, um, sounds. And then press enter to actually make the script. Okay. Then we will need to, on the game manager, so select that. We'll press add component. And we need to add component audio manager. This will be a completely new script that we are making. It's not a pre made script, so yeah. Okay. So, that's fully loaded. I'm going to drag this into the scripts folder. Like that. Okay. So, first of all, let's go into our sounds script. So just double click on it to open up um, up in Visual Studio. Ah, uh, 2017 for me. Because 2019 broke this, what you're about to see, this stuff. So yeah, woohoo. Okay. So, just going to delete the update and start. We will not be needing those at all. Okay. So, first of all, we will not be needing the model behavior. So, I'll just delete those. Then we have to add a little tag up here. So, we have to do the brackets, non curly brackets. Then we have to write system.serializable. And I'll explain why in a few seconds, or minutes, I should say. Okay, then we'll need a couple of variables. We need a public string for the name of the sound that we want to play, a public audio clip for the actual audio clip that we need that we want to play so this will be the actual sound that we play and I'm just going to call that clip then public float volume and then public float pitch I will make this look a bit better so I will just add an attribute to that so non curly brackets type in range Parentheses, then the minimum range, and then the maximum range. So for me, for the volume, that will be no volume, so zero. Then max volume will be one. And then for this pitch, I'll do the same thing, so range. And then it will be from 0 0.1 to 3. By the way, I'm, I'm getting this audio manager script from Brackies. I'll, I'll put his video in the link in the description. If you want more detail about this, we need two more variables. We need a public bool loop in case we want to loop a sound. And we need one more thing public audio source, and this will just be called source. And one thing that we do want to mark it as so the non curly brackets and mark that as hide in inspector, so now we cannot assign this in the inspector because we do not want to assign anything to it okay so now we can go into our audio manager so we have to go back into unity but let, let this compile okay we have to go into our game manager game object not script then I'm just going to double click on the audio manager script to open it up in Visual Studio. Delete the void start and update. We will not be using those quite yet. Or yet at all. 
Okay, so we will need to be using two unique attributes. So that's quite easy to add. At the top, we we separate using Unity Engine dot audio. Then we have to re require one more attribute using um system. Yep. So what these attributes do um it just gives you access to more things. Um, it's just as simple as that. So yeah. So now we have to write public sounds. So this is the script that we just created, the sounds class. Now we have to do this as an array, and I'll just call it sounds. So an array is just a list of these sounds. So now if we go back into Unity, we'll wait for that to compile. There we go. So now we have this little element. So if we just press this arrow next to it, it will go down, or it's a drop down. So if we just expand the size to one and open up this element, you'll see everything that we put in the sounds class here. We can see the name. I'm just gonna name this to theme because this will be our like our main theme music. Then you can see our clip. We have n nothing there yet. Then our volume, which will be uh 0 0.5 maybe. And then our pitch. We want to set this to one so it's normal. And then we want to set loop to true because it's our m music. See so, yeah. Okay, then we can go back inside our audio manager. And by the way, you can have more than one sound. You just have to set the size to two, three, four, whatever you want. Then you can just assign these all over again. So I shoot. Then I can just change these values set separately. And by the way, to remove one, you can either set that to one, or you can just right click on the name and say delete array element. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to go back into the audio manager script. There's one more variable that, that I have to make. Um, yeah. Public static audio manager, and I'll just call this instance. Okay. Now in the awake method, so avoid awake. Now remember, this is called before the start function, so it's called immediately when the game starts. And then, um, this... It's called a singleton pattern. Uh, it's kind of weird to use at first, but you'll just get used to it. And then I'll show you what it does when we start making sounds. I'll say if instance is equal to null, instance is equal to this object. So audio manager is equal to this audio manager. Then I just want to say else if it is not null, that means that there's two different audio managers in the scene, and we do not want that. So, I'll say debug.log warning. So that just gives us a little warning in the console. And for the warning, I'll just say two audio managers in the scene. And then to top it off, we just want to destroy the second game manager. So yeah, then right after we do that, we want to mark this game object with "Don't destroy on load." So when we re so when we reload the scene, it will still be there. Okay, now to actually start programming the sounds. So I'll create a for for each statement. So you just have to write for each. And to finish it off, press tab tab. So tab twice. Then for the variable, we want sounds, and we'll just call this sounds s. In collection of this sounds array. And you can just press enter and it will finish that off for you. Okay. We'll say s.source is equal to game object dot add component audio source so this is just saying um, for every object in the sounds array so if there are 
two objects in the sounds array, it will add two audio sources with the sound that we want to play. Then I'll say s dot source dot clip is equal to s dot clip s dot source dot volume is equal to s dot volume. I think you you see the pattern that's going on. S dot source dot pitch is equal to s dot pitch. S dot source dot loop is equal to s dot loop. And there we go. Now, the only function that we need is a function that to play the sound. So, we'll just write public void play. This will just play the sound. And this will take in one variable. It will be a string, and it will just take in the name of the sound that we need to play. Okay, so we want to make a variable called sounds. It'll, it'll be called S. And this part is kind of tricky. Um, it's weird syntax. And not even... And I get it. But it's kind of tricky to figure out. So it'll just say... Array dot find sounds sound. Then an arrow... Sound dot name is equal to name. It's definitely weird syntax. Um, so what this is saying, it's just finding the array called whatever we input here, and it's just playing it. Uh, that's, that's all it is. You'll say if s is equal to null. So if the sound doesn't even exist, we are we are just gonna. It, it, in the console, tell the player that it does not exist, just for an extra heads up. So let's say debug dot log error sound plus name plus not sound. So it will just say, um, I don't know, like if you have a sound name theme, but you actually call play theme with a Q, it'll say debug dot, dot log sound theme with a Q, not found. And it will also return. So it will not do this script anymore. Then right after that, we'll say s dot source dot play. And that is it. Now we have a fully working audio manager. And that is also it for this video. Next time, we will actually be adding some sounds, like shooting and some background music. Uh, so yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. One last thing. Go into the audio manager. In the start function, void start, it will just play the music when the game starts. And that's all. Bye, guys, and see you in the next video coming out tomorrow. And bye.